Hello again, guys. We are back in the workshop. I can't tell. It looks like we're a little bit crooked here. Maybe I can get us a little bit straight. So welcome back. Um, this is Kimberly with Unique Finds and Furniture Designs. We are back in the workshop tonight. It is Tuesday. We normally come here Tuesday, Thursday evenings, 8 o'clock um, as best we can. Um, sometimes we share those videos along the way. So if you have found us in your news feed and you have stopped scrolling and um, you have jumped on here with us, we thank you for that. We thank you for um, taking the time to um, watch this broadcast. So um, I am a premier retailer here in Kernersville um, area and uh, in the triad pretty much. We have several locations that we feature Dixie Bell chalk paint from. So um, in each of these tutorials, we try to go over some basics to help you guys um, if you're new to the uh, chalk paint world or to painting in general and you haven't put a brush in your hand and this is something new for you, we're glad you're here. We hope there's something here that you can um, take away from this broadcast that will help you um, be able to transform your pieces, your family heirlooms and your treasures um, in, in the years to come. And so um, that's what this is all about. This is why I come here is to help you guys out. And um, so I'm going to start from the basics. This um, piece I'm working on, this is a client's uh, piece that we're working on tonight. We're going to try to nip this out of here fairly quickly because she's um, in a pretty good rush for it. So, um, so this piece, as you can see, it is, um, this is not a stain. This is a paint to me. It looks like it's been painted. It looks like it's been sprayed on. So, hey, Miss Brandy, how are you? So, um, in this case, I am going to come in and I'm going to paint this piece for my client. So, she has chosen drop cloth um, to paint this in. And we're also going to do some distressing. But the distressing we're going to do is going to be kind of with the paint um, along the way. So, um, with using a darker tone to kind of create that look. So... Um, not to hold you guys up, I'm going to show you a couple of products. If you're new here and you haven't done this before, I did start prior to coming live tonight. I did clean this piece really well. Um, I Obviously, um, we have the White Lightning Cleaner. It is a powder form cleaner. Maybe you can kind of see from there. I add a teaspoon of this cleaner to a mist bottle. Shake it up with warm water, shake it up real good, and I clean my piece. And when I clean my piece, I use a, what I call a Scotch Brite. These are what I'm talking about. They're the 3M, um, what do they call these? The 3M stripping pads, but I call them a Scotch Brite. They work really well. I cut them in half, it makes them a little bit easier. And I use my mist bottle, I spray it with my cleaner, and I use my Scotch Brite to kind of clean that back down. So this is why you can kind of see there's no shine here. So it does a couple of things. It knocks down your shine, it cleans it, and it kind of wet sands it all at the same time. And that's using this. So what I'm doing with that cleaner is super clean now. It's not slick anymore. Um, and it's taking off any pledge, old English, any kind of dusting products that would be between my paint and my product off of here. So we've done three steps in one. That's clean it. We've deglossed it. We've cleaned it and we've kind of lightly sanded it all in one step using our cleaner and our scotch Brite. That kind of saves you guys if you're new to this and you don't and your piece is real shiny and um, you get to scotch Brite with your cleaner and I have a mist bottle very similar to this that I clean it with. That I put my cleaner in, shake it up real good and that's my first step. You guys didn't see that tonight because I'm, I wanted to just be able to roll on and show you guys some painting. So that was my first step. Always, always, always um, clean your piece really, really well. The, the um, waxes and the pledges and the English, old English, those kind of things can really build up on a piece. And that will create a barrier from your paint to your product. And so it's, it's pretty important to do that. Second thing is this particular piece has absolutely no flaws in it. Um, it has a couple of nicks around the edge, but it just nicked the paint. And since I'm painting it anyway, there's no structural damage to the piece. So there's no need to do any repairs or anything. This is a really quick, um, relatively simple piece to paint. Now, once I do start painting it, we are going to come in, or I'm basically going to come in here, and I'm going to highlight all the details. It's a beautiful piece. I'm going to kind of scroll you down so you can kind of see it 
So it does have an opening door here. Um, we are not, as far as I know, I'm not painting inside here. Client hasn't requested that. Um, otherwise, you could spray it if you wanted or you could paint it. It is red inside, but that is not going to be her color. Um, and then also, we're not painting inside the drawer. So it has a drawer here and, and a nice, pretty good, nice little shelf area. This would make an excellent little bar cabinet, actually, in my opinion. But uh, I'm sure it's probably going to be an entryway item. So you can kind of, you know, see that in the entry. And you can see on this piece, I'll drive you in a little closer, try not to bobble you too bad. You can kind of see where they've kind of, when they did this piece, they kind of made these etching areas um, to kind of make it stand out and contrast. It does actually have a, a um, print type thing in the front, but it's flush, so you will not see this when we paint. So um, a couple of things. I always go over my hardware, and uh, when I go over my hardware, I'll put my paint on. I'll go over my hardware and distress that. It'll kind of mock this hardware out. You'll see it a whole lot more um, than you're seeing right now. She did not choose tonight to do a different contrast color on the top. If it was your piece, you could do that. You know, you could do a, um, let's say a coffee bean on the top. Since I'm using drop cloth, um, the color in this color, this is dr called drop cloth. So a coffee bean would be really nice with this because of the fact it has some brownish undertones in it. So it would really pop off a nice contrast there. She's staying all neutral, so I'm not worrying about that tonight, but giving you some ideas if you are new to this and that's what you're doing. So again, if you're new to this broadcast, um, thank you for jumping on with us. You can kind of see my cabinet here over there in the corner. Um, obviously my paint area, and this is the old world style um, hutch that we were working on last week. And it's about to roll out tomorrow and kind of do its showcase. You can kind of see that up a little bit more as we went ahead and um, completed that piece. So she'll be rolling out tomorrow. And, uh, but we're gonna get back here, get started, get some paint on this piece. So um, Miss Brandy, hope you're doing well. I hope that everyone out in California is doing well as, as well, that everyone is okay out there with those fires going on. So I'm just gonna jump right in here. I have um, my mini, brush this is dixie bell's mini brush um the mini angle we have many different ones i use the oval medium sometimes and um but in this case we have a lot of flat surface here and since i'm working with a lot of flat surface i'm not gonna use an oval brush i'm gonna use a flat brush and i will take this brush since it is dry yes you can kind of see it's well loved and i'm going to miss my brush i always 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 start with it and this is a pretty fine you can see that mist shooting out there is a pretty fine mist bottle and if you guys are missing these we do have a few uh, seems like i have a couple somewhere but we are um on back order with our with our bottles so we will get those mist bottles as soon as they are off back order to you guys so i'm just going to shake up my um drop cloth here which is her color choice and i'm going to get going and let you guys see the kind of coverage that you can expect um, with Dixie Bell, and we will be painting this pretty good size um, or pretty good tone of red. It's kind of a red and black mixed in, so I'm pretty sure it was probably a spray. It probably sprayed. Looks like a sprayed piece to me. And of course, you know, I'm going to get paint on me first thing. And let's get started here on this and show you guys kind of what we're gonna do with it. So I'm just gonna get started in um, probably up where obviously you guys can see. And I'm just gonna start getting some paint on this piece for this young lady. Since this is a pretty quick, um, um, she's in kind of a hurry for it. So I'm gonna get it going, work her in. I know I have a couple of other pieces going on here and I'm just gonna work it on in because she, um, I think she's having surgery or some kind of thing going on. She's trying to get everything, you know, her ducks in a row before this happens. So, we are just going to hop in here and we are going to get going on it. Most times, you see I'm going over this with a white, oh, a real creamy, buttercreamy, uh, this drop cloth, but it's kind of a real creamy kind of white. 
and you're seeing how it's covering over this red and you can see that and I'm gonna pull you in so you can see the coverage. This is gonna be, oops, I'm sorry guys. I know that was kind of like swimming right there. So you can kind of see, I pull you in and you don't have to see me. Obviously my hair is up and I'm a wreck, but I'm always, you know, working out here. So my paint, you guys are the only ones who really see me <laughs> on here and on my YouTube. So you can kind of see how now again, I'm sort of going with what I think is the grain, even though there's no real grain on this piece, I kind of go with the direction. One of the things I love about Dixie Belle paint, if you stop and, um, and then come back in and start over again, the one thing is, is you don't really have to worry about a dry line. Um, a lot of paints, you know, you have that dry line, you can obviously tell. That there's a dry line now some people will probably be asking why there is no um boss on here for bleed through this is not necessarily a bleed through kind of this is not really a stain you can tell this isn't a stain that this is some kind of like what do you call that like a powder they call it the powder spray maybe on this piece and um so that's a little different than um if it were a a vintage f piece that had actually dipped in with a stain so i mean i'm a, my my client and i we really didn't talk about going over the hardware but i'm gonna go over it because this is how i always do my hardware she'll have <laughs> we'll go over it if it's something she didn't want but you can see how that hardware sort of jumps out to it at you a little bit more than it does here just kind of blends in with the thing so with the piece so um, that's kind of why I do it you can see how well this coverage is um, this is just one coat now I'm just kind of coming in here um, Dixie Belle chalk paint is also a self-leveling chalk paint base paint so um, when it goes to self level, it'll level any of your um, brush strokes out of it. So that's really kind of nice. So um, the finer brush you use, the more it does that. So, but this is kind of my go-to brush on a flat surface. This is one coat. Um, you can kind of see how this does when you only just barely kind of hit it. It gives it that vintage vibe there. So I'll probably come in. Um, obviously, we're going to two-tone. We're going to add some distressing with paint on this piece, so you'll be able to see that when I'll be coming in around all these angles on this piece as well. So I'm just going to paint along. This is the first time we've actually been able to just continue on painting with uh, you guys because most of the time you know we're cleaning prepping and getting our piece ready this is kind of going to be easier tonight because I'm just going to be able to come in and show you guys some paint so once this dries um, obviously because this is for a client a lot of times I'll come in and do a couple of coats on here do a second coat so I'll come in and lightly um, knock off any of the roughness um, in the paint and then um, give it a second coat. When I give it a second coat, I do come in with the um, brush, or excuse me, with the uh, mist bottle. So I will come in with a mist bottle and um, thin that paint because I won't really be looking for coverage at that point. I'm just trying to um, c cover any brush strokes or anything like that that it would be after. You don't always have to try to get one coat coverage, but just so you know you can if that's what you're looking for. Um, you can do it multiple ways, but most of the time you get pretty good coverage out of this, out of our paints. It's a great thing about Dixie Bell paint as far as that goes. Hopefully you all can still see. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm just jumping in here and getting this um, entryway table um, ready and pre prepped, cleaned and ready for the first coat of paint. Then, um, like I say, we'll come in here and add some distressing along the way. And we'll pop that photo out there for you guys. So you guys can kind of see. So if it's kind of your first shot out of the bag with painting, this will give you kind of an idea of how that's gonna go on, what it's gonna look like. Hey, Miss Pat, hope you're doing well. 
So that's what we're doing here tonight. We have cleaned this with the White Lightning Cleaner by Dixie Bell prior to using our Scotch-Brite and got this piece prepped and cleaned so that we don't have any oils from Pledge, any grease or oil or anything like that. More, more like a wax, I guess you would say. Making sure those aren't on our piece. So this is just gonna be our base coat tonight. And like I said, I'll probably come in. Now I only have an eight ounce jar of paint here. So just so you guys know that. So my eight ounce jar of paint is not gonna have a problem painting this whole piece and I will most likely paint it twice with this eight ounce jar. So your eight ounce jar of paint does go fairly far. So as you can see, I'm getting most of my coverage and then um, tomorrow I'll come in and give it another second layer and then um, I will begin to add the uh, detail to it. So I'll be coming in and creating that Everywhere there's a crease or a fold on this piece is where the distressing will take place. So with distressing on this piece, obviously it's not, it's gonna be kind of fake distressing with wax or with a paint. You can do that with wax or paint. And we'll be doing that because if we were to distress this in a natural way on all these edges and everything, it would show red up underneath here. And she doesn't really want red showing through. So obviously that's why we're painting it. So that's why we're gonna come in with a wax or, um, or a paint. You can do it either way. You can thin your paint or, um, or you can use a dark wax. You could use a black wax on this case. You could use a brown obviously because this has that light brown undertones to it. Or you could come in here with, um, with a gray wax. It just really depends on you know your client or yourself obviously what your room is like so it's really just basically that simple and so all I'm going to do is just to continue on painting so um, obviously um, this is not an overly difficult piece I suggest if it's new to you and you've not painted a lot before um, getting something that doesn't need uh, necessarily a lot of repairs you know, um, for your first time out and uh, just get something that's kind of relatively simple that doesn't need a whole lot or have something that doesn't need a whole lot of repair makes it much easier for you to kind of get the swing of it before you get into challenging yourself with a little bit more, you know, challenging piece. But um, sky's the limit. You can do it. All you got to do is get a brush and some good paint in your hand and you can turn all of those family heirlooms that you have in your attic or around and you can upscale them into your environment by, you know, just grabbing a brush and a little can of paint. It's really just that kind of, that simple. So um, just really clean your piece really well before you get going. Obviously you can see this red. Um, I'm bad about not taking a photograph of much because I'm always, you know, I knew my client's um, sort of in a hurry for this piece, so I didn't really take a bunch of photos or anything. I have a few, so we'll put them out there um, in the airwaves when we get this piece accomplished here. So naturally, it has, has some natural lines to it already by itself, so just go on along with the lines. Obviously, I'm going in the same direction on what I would think if this was a piece of wood and the same with the frame all the way around. I just kind of follow what's already here. Let that be my guide basically and just get going on it. So you see it's not very hard. Just got to just get started. That's the hardest part I think. As I tell everybody else, I really don't think painting is that difficult. I think the hardest part is choosing a color. And um, if you already have an idea of your color, you're probably way ahead of the game just because you've got an idea where you're headed with your piece. Um, a lot of people, that's the hardest thing, choosing a color. And um, Dixie Bell, great thing about Dixie Bell is they offer so many different colors, but it also makes it harder to choose a color because there's so many wonderful colors to choose from. So 
So that can work for you or against you, depending on, you know, how, um, how you like things. You know, or you can grab a multitude of colors, like I have done, and create your own little look. So pretty much that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to continue on painting and um, you guys will come back here. Mm, if I don't get this out, I may get this out before Thursday, but if not, we'll show pictures prior to if we do get it out before Thursday, because I know we're trying to roll on this particular one for our clients. So we thank you all for being here tonight. We, if we have any questions, if you have any questions that we can answer, and we have left this broadcast and it's in a replay. Just ask us the questions. Go ahead and message us. We'll be sure to um, address those questions or concerns all along the way any way we can. So hope it was helpful in some way um, for you guys for um, getting started on your first few pieces. And we hope you have a blessed evening and we'll see you a little later. Bye for now. Thank you so much.